Hey guys, I have here a Microtik CRS504-4XQ-IN network switch. This is a 100 gig, 100 gigabits per second network switch. That's quite a lot of bandwidth. So today we'll take a look at the features of this switch. We'll see what's inside. We'll take a look at some of the software and then we'll do some testing with iPerf3. This switch has an MSRP of $799. That is quite a bit expensive for your average home user. However, when you take a look at the features it has and compare to other 100 gig switches on the market, it's actually a great value. So let's take a look at the front of our switch. We have dual hot swappable redundant power supplies for AC input. We have four QSFP28 interfaces. We have an RJ45 console port. We have an RJ45 network port. This is your management interface. It's a 100 megabit ethernet port. It does work as an actual switch port. However, it's recommended that it be specifically used on a management separate network. We have a pair of pins for DC input. We also have a standard barrel connector and this will support 36 to 57 volts. And then this actually supports PoE or power over ethernet. So you can power this whole device over the management port with PoE. That's a pretty cool feature and that's how efficient this switch is. Additionally, this also came with a pair of rack ears. So you can affix these to the side of your switch and mount it in a standard 19 inch rack. Uh, however, you can also turn these 90 degrees like so. Put them on the side of your switch and you can mount this to a wall or to a desk or to the bottom of a table or something. Additionally, if you prefer to use it as a desktop switch, there are a set of rubber feet you can apply to the bottom as well. And then we also have our pin connector here for the DC input. It should also be noted that these QSFP28 ports will support 100 gig, 40 gig, and then you can also get breakout cables. So you can get a one to four breakout cable that will support 110 or 25 gig ethernet. So if you were to put four breakout cables in here, you could connect 16 devices at 25 gigabits per second. So there are a number of connectivity options. All right, there's not too much to see under the lid. You can see our two power supplies we have here. The power output from both of these power supplies comes into the main board separated. So we have power supply one and power supply two, then they are combined on this board. We see both of our fans here. They are blowing towards the back of the case. We've got a rather large heatsink on our processor here. We have heat sinks on the QSFP28 cages as well there, just for some added cooling. There's really not a whole lot to see in here. And let's just take a look at our power supplies here. Uh, so these are 12 volt, 5 amp power supplies. They're kind of tiny compared to dealing with the Supermicro and the Dell PowerEdge power supplies. It's kind of funny looking actually. So I've connected one of the AC inputs. Additionally, I've connected the management ethernet port. Uh, this cable is going directly back to my desktop computer. All right, now we're ready to take a look at the initial configuration. Now by default, this switch comes with a 192.168.88 address, and that will be dot one by default. So what we need to do is manually assign our network adapter and address in that range temporarily until we complete the initial configuration. 192.168.88.2. Okay, and as soon as I save these settings, and we see our device is now responding. Uh, so up in a standard web browser, enter the IP address. If it does not log in automatically as you saw mine did, the default username is admin and the default password is blank. So we're going to leave password blank and I will give it a password. So we'll be using this as a bridge, but if you were to use it as a router, you can pick the port you want to find as the uh, WAN port, Ethernet 1 or SFP 1. Um, I don't personally know why you would want to pick Ethernet 1 since that's only a 100 megabit port, but it is an option to drop down there. And you see there's a variety of additional settings you can check, um, but we are going to use bridge mode. I want to give it a static IP address in my home networking range. We'll do .0.253 and we're on a slash 24 subnet and the identity or the host name on the network, that's fine. We'll just call it Microtech. And we no longer have connectivity because we have changed the IP address. So now we can switch back to our normal network. All right, so I've disconnected the power and the networking cable here. I now have a new cable that's going back to my home switch. So we're going to plug this in And you hear the switch starts up. So it is now running with PoE or power over ethernet. Uh, so we'll give that a minute to start up and then jump back to the computer. All right, and we can see here that the switch is now responding on the new IP address we've assigned to it. All right, so now we're back to the same page we start at. If you want to do anything else, any other changes, uh, we are good to go. So up at the top right here, I'm gonna click Webfig. 
And we'll take a look mostly at what's in the GUI here. Um, you can also access the terminal via the terminal button in the top right. So the first thing I want to take a look at here is the PoE. In particular, I'm curious how much power this is consuming. Now this device does require 802.3 BT and my switch is only good for 802.3 AT. And the difference between those is about 25 to 50 watts. Um, so when we start doing our testing, we are going to plug in the AC power supply for that reason. But I just wanted to show the PoE that it works and see what kind of power it's consuming before we move forward with the AC input. And I'm going to do show, was it show power, power of Ethernet, and this is in port 17. And it turns out it's in port 33. So let's try that again. Show power of Ethernet 33. So we see PoE status says delivering. And down here under power information, we see it's putting out 57 volts at 228 milliamps or 14.8 watts. That's all it's taking to run that switch is 14.8 watts. Now, of course, that will go up once you start using it. It's pretty much sitting idle right now. The fans are not spinning at full RPM. We don't have any traffic going in or out. None of the interfaces are connected. Um, so that will go up significantly, but this is the idle draw. So going back to our web interface here, this is loaded with router OS version 7.6. Um, this particular device does not support switch OS. I know some of the micro ticks you can switch between router OS or switch OS. Now this has a massive list of functionality here, but uh, one thing to point out is just because the functionality exists in the router OS itself doesn't mean the switch actually supports it. For example, one of the first things we see on the top left here is wireless. And I can guarantee you that this device does not have any wireless functionality. Um, there's a number of things down here and most of this isn't going to be relevant for your home network or even for a home lab type setup. So the most useful tab I think is going to be the interfaces list and you can see here each QSFP28 is broken out into four interfaces because you can get the breakout cables there. So again, we have a total of 16 interfaces. We could set up a DHCP server, a DNS server. You know, we've got firewall here, SSH, but one thing to keep in mind is this device is only a single core CPU at 650 megahertz. So I really wouldn't do a whole lot beyond layer two switching um, and maybe some basic layer three functions, but I wouldn't be setting up like server services and things like that on this device. So for the test of the switch, I have two servers here. This is a Dell PowerEdge R730. Then I've got a Supermicro with an X10 SRI motherboard. Both of these servers are running Oracle Linux 8.6, which is also Red Hat. And they both have a Mellanox Connect X-4. PCIe X16 card. It's a single port 100 gig card. Uh, and I do have a video on this channel where I showed how to configure this for ethernet mode. And for connecting these servers, I have a pair of DAC cables here, DAC or direct attach cable. And these are from 10G Tech. So we'll put the super micro server on port one. And we've got the R730 on port number two. And I am leaving the management interface connected as well. That way we can get DHCP. All right, so we're at the console of the Supermicro server. So if I do an NMCLI device status, ENS6 is our Mellanox card. So if I do an ETH tool, ENS6. However, it is not currently connected. It says down here, link detected, no. Um, and that's because there is an odd setting we have to change in the MicroTik switch. So there are four interfaces for port number one. However, if you're using a single cable and not a breakout cable, um, that is either 40 or 100 gigabits, you'll enter your settings in port number one of interface one. So if we scroll down here, we'll see it is set to auto negotiation is checked. And if you scroll down further, it says auto negotiation failed. And that's because what we need to do is set uh, FEC mode is defaulted to auto. We need to set FEC mode to FEC 91. We should be able to go back to our console and do NMCLI device status and we see it's getting an IP address so it's starting to connect. So if I refresh the interfaces page, we now have a connection, here we go. We now see some information on the DAC cable. It correctly says it's a two meter cable. It's a Mellanox cable. That's the uh, firmware I guess it's flashed in the SFP module. And if we scroll down a little bit further, we see the rate is auto-negotiated to 100 gigabits per second. And back on the Super Micro console, if I do the NMCLI device status again, we see ENS6 uh, now is connected and I should be able to do IP ADDR ENS6. And this is the IP it's received from DHCP, so that's good as well. 
All right, so I've spent a little bit of time here trying to optimize this uh, bandwidth test. And I'm gonna show you what I found. Unfortunately, I can't hit the full 100 gigabits. Um, so on the right hand side here, I have the server we're going to use. So I'm gonna start an iperf3. So on the left here, we have the client and these are the settings I found that give the greatest throughput. So we have two parallel threads, a window size of two meg, uh, dash Z is zero copy, and a length of one meg and port 5201, which matches the port our server's running on. So we're gonna go ahead and run that. And you do see on the right here on HTOP, Core 21 is at 100%, and yes, this is set to uh, performance governor mode. And our average throughput was 51 to 52 gigabits per second, which isn't terrible, but that's only half of the available bandwidth. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to run two copies of iperf3. So, uh, so we're gonna have a server on 5201, and we're gonna start a second server on 5202. And then we're going to start two copies of the client, again, one on 5201 and one on 5202. And looking at HTOP here, you can see we have two cores that are CPU bound, three and 23. And we're seeing approximately 80 gigabits between the two. We've got 38 and 39. So let's try that again with a slightly smaller window size here. We'll do one meg for the window size. And that gave us a little more. We're at 43 and 42 there. So that's what, 86? About 86 gigabits. Yeah, that's giving us around 88 gigabits there. So we're going to run dstat here on the top now for the server. And look at that receive. 9,810 gigabytes, 10 gigabytes per second. That is insane. That's crazy, okay. All right, so there we go. The Microtik CRS504-4XQ-IN 100 gigabit switch. As cool as this product is, I think 100 gigabit bandwidth is a little bit more than I need in my home and my home lab. I do have 10 gigs set up to some of my devices and that's good enough for my use. I guess where I really see this switch being used is if you have multiple high speed switches such as, you know, maybe you have multiple 10 or 40 gig switches and you need a common point to connect them all together. This may be the switch for that because that would give you a fast link out to all of those switches. Or if you have a rack and you're trying to roll out 25 gig to all of your servers, I suppose you could use the one to four breakout cables and that gives you a cheap 25 gig 16 port switch. I am going to work on tuning iPerf3 a little bit. I do believe it is CPU bound based on what we saw on HTOP. Uh, that server is running an E5-2699V3 CPU. If there's anything else you guys would like to see me test or demo with this switch, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.